Welcome to this video on how to get Star Trek The Next Generation a final unity working on handheld devices. Uh, this isn't the sort of video I usually make. I'm usually trying to get old light gun games working on my Raspberry Pi but I uh, posted a, an image of me playing this game on my RG351B on Reddit last night and I woke up this morning to uh, a couple of messages saying looks like a really cool game, how do I get it working? Uh, so I'll, I'll just walk you through it. It's not incredibly technical. Uh, you will need a, a few bits of additional software, but I'll I'll go through it all. Like I say, this isn't the sort of video I usually make, but if you if you want to see more of these sort of old DOS games on handheld devices, let me know in the comments. Give me a like and a subscribe, and I'll uh, I'll make more content for you. Uh, so first of all, I found this really good guide to getting the game working on DOS Games Forum by somebody called Huggy Baby 2 back in 2007 uh, it's been an absolute massive help essentially it's a guide to how how to bypass the installation procedure of the game uh, and it makes it super easy to install it on your, your handheld so first thing you'll need is a, a copy of the game so I've got a totally legit copy here which is a an NRG file, a disk image file but to make it easier for me to work in Windows, uh, I convert it into a, an ISO. So for that you'll need uh, this piece of software, or the piece of software I usually use, uh, AnyBurn. It's a CD burning piece of software. It's got this handy little tool, Convert Image File Format. So if you go into there and you pick your NRG file, uh, it gives you the option to turn it into an ISO so if you just go through that process you end up with something like this, a, an ISO file. The reason I turn it into an ISO file is because in Windows if you double click on that it just instantly mounts it as a, a virtual drive and you can look at all the uh, the files there. So what you want to do is do the installation procedure on your Windows PC and then copy everything wholesale onto your memory card for your handheld device. So I make a new folder and call it STFU. We all know what that stands for. Star Trek Final Unity, of course. Uh, I take everything from that ISO image and copy it across. Now the installation procedure that we're trying to skip here uh, decompresses one of these archives in here. The archive is called STTNGINS. If we open up that archive, use your favourite compression software, be it WinRAR or WinZip or 7Z. Uh, get everything in that folder and copy it across into your new STFU folder and you'll get this error saying that you're trying to replace the mcheck file. doesn't matter if you skip replacing it or you replace it with your new one, but if you get that error message you're heading in the right direction. Uh, the next step is to create an any file that's going to have all your uh, sound card settings and CD settings in there. Uh, luckily in this guide there's just a, a text box here with the, the contents of the any file. So copy that and open up a notepad and paste it. Now you want to save in your STFU folder not as a text file but you want to save it as ST T N G dot I N I and save it in there. And the final step that you need to do with this folder is create a new subfolder in there and call it save game. Now, you'll probably be using save states to save your game anyway, but without creating that subfolder there, you won't be able to uh, save the game actually in the game, if that makes any sense. Okie dokie, so that's all good to go. 
what you need to do then is put your micro SD card into your PC and copy this over into the appropriate ROM folder. Now I'm using Arc OS, uh, so the folder I use is DOS. And you can see I've already copied it over there, but literally just drag and drop that in there. And you'll have the game ready to go. Okay, so I'll show you how that runs on the handheld. So here we are with the device. As you can see, I'm running Arc OS, uh, one of my favorite custom firmwares for this device. Uh, I reached out to the developer to get this game up and running, a guy called Christian. Is super super helpful. Uh, yeah, I can't recommend Arc OS enough. So cycle through your systems and go to MS DOS, and there you'll see a list of all the executionable files. Ignore them all. Uh, we can hide these later. All you're interested in is this first file that says stTng, and load that up. And you'll get another list of executionables. I'm not sure if this shows well on the camera, but again, go down to stTng and load that up. And the game should load, hopefully. Now there's one more step. Oh, don't worry if this uh, screen hangs for ages. It, it takes about uh, 20 seconds to, to load into the game. Uh, but what you want to do is go into your retro art menu and go down, oh no, press B to go into the main menu and then hit settings, go to input and then go all the way down to port 1 controls. Hit that and then you want to change your device type so it says, wait for the text to scroll, it's mouse with left analog stick. Select that and then hit B to get out of there. B again. And B again. Go down to configuration file and save current configuration. You can then exit the RetroArch menu and wait for the game to load. So you only have to set that uh, that mouse control once, but that will allow you to move the mouse cursor with your uh, thumbstick there. And you should see this plays out just like an episode of Star Trek The Next Generation. I absolutely love this game. Captain Clark, Stardate 471. You probably can't see it that well, I'm in a, a very bright room. But when the game finally loads, you can see Captain you can... Clark Supplemental. And being interrupted by Patrick Stewart, you can move that uh, cursor around with a thumbstick. Shut up, Patrick. Uh, yeah, so that, that's the game. Uh, like I say, if you want to see more of these sorts of videos, uh, please put something in the comments. Give me a like and a subscribe. I'll uh, I'll make more for you. Uh, thank you very much for watching.